All right, so welcome everybody. Today we're here to do some experiential therapy training. We're going to be looking at some sociometry tools that come from the field of psychodrama. Uh, the first tool that we're going to be looking at is called a spectrogram. Spectrogram is a group as a whole assessment. It allows us to get a quick assessment of the entire group at the same time in an efficient way. The founder of psychodrama, Jacob Moreno, believed that in order to do true group therapy, we had to first start with group assessment. Just like when we start individual therapy, we always start with assessment. How can we do any interventions if we haven't first assessed an individual or assessed a group? So a spectrogram is very simple. Just like the name suggests, it's looking at the group based on a criteria on a spectrum. So the first prompt is very simply, how much experience do you have with experiential therapy, with sociometry, and with psychodrama? And I'm going to designate this poll here as a 10 out of 10, and that poll there as a 0 out of 10. So can everybody see this imaginary line in between the poles, the spectrum? There's a 10 here, a 0 there, and every space in between. Over here would be a 10 out of 10. I know everything there is to know about sociometry, psychodrama, experiential therapy. I'm Jacob Moreno himself. <laughs> I created the field, I write about it, I published about it, I teach others. You might place yourself here in the center at about a five. If you know a thing or two about sociometry, psychodrama, maybe you've been training for a couple months or years, you're starting to integrate it into your work. You know that you know a few things and you know that there's still a bit that you don't know. And over here would be a, a zero out of 10. So you would place yourself here. If this is going to be your first experience with experiential therapy, with sociometry, and with psychodrama. So go ahead and place yourself on this spectrum. And once you find your place, you could just go ahead and find the person closest to you or people closest to you and share with them in a few sentences about why you put yourself at this specific spot on the spectrum. So again, about a four, four or five-ish yeah, area. I think so. I've been in the psychodrama sociometry world for about three years. I'm applying for my first level of certification and I'm also in graduate school so I'm not practicing clinically anywhere so I certainly know that I have a lot left to learn to okay. say the least and I'm also trying to give myself credit for the many hours of training that I have mm -hmm. done and so because I sort of feel like I belong in a zero but I think I belong more in the middle of the spectrum than where my gut tells me to go. So I can relate yeah. to that. Yeah. And often, especially being around uh, different professionals in experiential therapy, it kind of feels like I'm a little bit more over there. Right. Um, but I would say about a four or five, maybe leaning more towards four. Mm -hmm. um, I've been training for... I don't even remember what the first training, a, a year and a half, Got maybe it. two years. Yeah. And uh, especially recently, I've kind of gotten, um, I'm working with two different trainers. So one mm -hmm. including Scott and mm -hmm. one back home. Um, her name is Karen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with the amount of hours, I'm also uh, about to uh, get my first certification in experiential therapy. Yeah, so the ISEP specifically. Mm -hmm. Same. Um, and so I did it a little bit backwards. So mm -hmm. I am relatively early on in my traditional education, mm -hmm. and um, but I do work clinically. Mm -hmm. So I work at a drug and alcohol outpatient facility. Got it. And so I've been able to incorporate mostly just sociometry, mm -hmm. and as well as kind of uh, a brief psychodramatic um, interventions in like group and uh, right. individual therapy as well. Right. So it's like. I'm taking it easy, yeah. um, as I've been trained to do, mm -hmm. um, and continuing to, to make sure that I am comfortable with what I'm doing. Right. Um, but it has been, uh, you know, Scott actually had said when I, I told him my experience when I first got into psychodrama, it's like catching a bug. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it, it, it is, is very addictive, passion. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, we have very similar sort of paths, actually. Mm -hmm. Psychodrama and sociometry kind of pushed me to 
you know, continue with my traditional education. Exactly, we really belong on this line yeah. together. Because when I started clinical work, I actually really had no direction to go. Like, I was just, mm. and uh, I was like, kind of winging it. And I had a really fantastic supervisor that helped kind of guide me, and I did uh, primarily just psychoeducation. Like, I love to talk. <laughs> I love like didactic sure, yeah. education, yeah. Um, but once I got uh, kind of a taste of what goes on here, I was like, this is like real like group therapy and like group work and like individual work. So take a minute to finish up. All right, now that everybody's finished sharing and starting to connect with each other, we're going to move on to our second spectrogram. So when you're doing multiple spectrograms, it's important that you change the axis so that folks don't just get stuck in the same spot on the spectrogram. Last time we went this way, so this time we'll go this way. Changing the axis forces everybody in the group to move a little bit, helps get participants unstuck if they're feeling a little stuck, and it allows people to connect with, with new members of the group. So we're really getting the sociometry going with every prompt, Group members are warming up more to the group. So our second spectrogram here is going to be about how much have you been integrating sociometry, psychodrama, and experiential therapy into your work already? So over here is going to be a 0 out of 10. I'm just getting started. This is my first training in this, so I haven't had an opportunity to integrate any of it into my work yet. Um, maybe I'm looking forward to doing so after this training, but this is my first experience with experiential therapy, with sociometry and psychodrama. Haven't integrated anything into my work yet. Over here is going to be a 10 out of 10, so about in the middle here is a 5 out of 10. Maybe I've been studying and training in this for a few months, a few years, and I'm starting to integrate some of it into my work. Maybe I've done a few spectrograms already with my clients, with my groups. Uh, still learning, but I've, I'm integrating it into my work. I use it here and there. And over here will be a 10 out of 10. So you place yourself here if everything you do in your work now involves experiential therapy. The only thing I do is psychodrama, is sociometry, and experiential work. 10 out of 10. So go ahead and place yourself on this spectrum. How much have you integrated these methods into your work? And once you've found your place, you can go ahead and share with whoever's closest to you about why you put yourself at this specific spot. How have you been integrating this into your work, and how have your clients responded to it? Hi. I'm Avi. Kira. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, I feel like I should be more over there, but it's a lot of my own, some of my own insecurities and stuff that I'm working through. But I do a little bit of experiential work in my field. Um, I run an intensive outpatient group with women. Um, I was just invited to uh, expand some experiential work into a partial program um, around, you know, it's all psychodrama stuff. But um, yeah, I, uh, I uh, was way more involved a couple of years, well, not that long ago, um, had kind of pulled away. Uh, so just, you know, again, trying to feel more comfortable, uh, more secure around it and hoping to integrate it on a more regular basis. I use experiential therapy every week. I'm an experiential therapist right now at Center for Families. I work with teens, and I do floor checks, um, some sociometry, some spectrograms on the regular, at least weekly, with uh -huh. my group, trying uh -huh. to get them familiar with it so that they're more comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, most of my experience is in adventure therapy. Oh, so that's awesome. Yeah, it's really fun, and I'm, so I'm kind of used to getting people out of their comfort zones. Um, That's great. I'll have to come visit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can relate to what you said about being insecure about using it, but I find that the more I use it, yeah. the easier yeah, it I, is. Yeah, I get that. What's your age group that you're um, 14 to 18. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, so they're pretty... Um, nervous yeah. at first when I ask them to get up and even right. just move around. Right. Sometimes there's right. resistance just to moving. Yeah. Um, I imagine with peer situation, like checking in, who's, yeah, who's feeling like this is okay and safe. Yeah. yeah. They do really well with these one-on-one -on -one sharing, okay. too. Okay. So that yeah. is really helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to our next spectrogram. This one's going to be a little bit different. Instead of sharing verbally, I'm going to 
facilitate us sharing in a different way. For this one, the prompt is going to be about how, how confident you feel facilitating experiential therapy techniques, sociometry, and psychodrama. So over here is a 10 out of 10. I am 100% confident. Every time I facilitate something experientially, I am just 100% confident. No problems. Over here is a 5 out of 10. So when I facilitate sociometry tools or spectrograms or any experiential tools, I have some confidence and there's maybe some anxiety too. Of course, in psychodrama we teach that spontaneity and anxiety are inversely correlated. So when our anxiety is high, our spontaneity is low. When our spontaneity is high, our anxiety is low. So the more spontaneity we can tap into, the more confidence we can have. So here would be, I have some confidence, some anxiety. And over here would be a 1 out of 10. 1 out of 10. If you didn't have at least a 1 out of 10 in terms of comfort facilitating experiential therapy, I don't think you would have showed up to the training. I don't think you would have already been using some of these tools in your groups. So we'll make this a strength-based spectrogram where there's no zero. You have at least a 1 out of 10. I know, I know all of you here, and I've seen at least a 1 out of 10 in everybody in terms of confidence. So you place yourself here if there's just a little growing confidence that you're tapping into. So go ahead and place yourself on this scale. How confident are you facilitating experiential processes? And once you've found your place, once you've found your place, rather than sharing verbally, I'm going to have you just for a few seconds take a body posture that represents your level of confidence facilitating. Oftentimes we can share a whole lot more non-verbally with our body than we ever could verbally. So just for a few seconds take a body posture that represents where you're at on the spectrum that embodies and expresses your level of confidence facilitating. All at the same time, go ahead. <laughs> and take a look around at everybody's sharing. And you can de-roll, shake it off, shake it off. All right. So the video that you just watched depicts the sociometry tool called the spectrogram. And this, of course, is a very versatile group tool that you can use in any group setting. The spectrogram can be useful in training groups or educational groups in the classroom. It could be used in community groups to assess the needs or, or wants of community members. You could use a spectrogram in a psycho psychotherapy group, of course, or a supervision group in an organizational group. Uh, it really can be used anywhere where there's a group of people. And the spectrogram is nice because it allows you to quickly assess the group based on any criteria that you choose. I find it especially helpful at the beginning of a group session. Uh, for example, if I'm working with a group of clients on a specific topic, such as the intersection of addiction and trauma, I might want to know how much they already know about the intersection of addiction and trauma. Or if I'm working with a group of students about psychodrama, for example, I might want to do a spectrogram asking them how familiar they are with psychodrama already before I begin teaching. This allows me to modify my approach to meet the group where they're at. Now, when using a spectrogram, there's a, a, a couple important teaching pieces to keep in mind. One of which, which you saw in the video, is that uh, the traditional spectrogram always uses a 0 on one end and a 10 on the other. However, I think there's some times where it can be useful to uh, use a 1 out of 10 instead of a 0 out of 10 as one pole, and keeping the 10 out of 10 as the other pole. This prevents group members from selecting a 0. Now, times that this will be useful would be when using positive criteria, uh, and especially with client groups. Um, I know in my work with addiction and trauma, it prevents them from downplaying some of their experience or knowledge. Now, an, another important thing to consider when doing a spectrogram is what to do if 
uh, the entire group ends up on one end of the spectrogram and somebody ends up on a different end by themselves. And I think what you do depends on what end of the spectrogram that person ends up on and the prompt. If we did a spectrogram with the prompt of uh, 0 to 10 or 1 to 10, how much do you know about psychodrama? And somebody ends up on the low end of the spectrogram by themselves where the rest of the group is on the high end of the spectrogram. There's some different methods that you can use to activate the mutual aid in the group and have people on the high end offer insight or, or share a little bit about their experience or, or in a sentence teach something meaningful to somebody on the low end of the spectrogram. You could have that person on the low end of the spectrogram ask questions to those on the high end. Uh, with a little more psychodrama training, you could even invite them to reverse roles and to experience different parts of the spectrogram from the role of the other. It could also be helpful to ask folks on the high end of the spectrogram uh, if they were at one point standing at the low end of the spectrogram, specifically with, with that criteria, and to have them uh, connect with some similarities Another thing that is important to know about spectrograms is that we can also use them on teletherapy or online teaching sessions. Now, of course, it looks very different for teletherapy or online. Rather than having participants being able to move around the room and physically line up based on what you saw in the video, uh, we modify it uh, for use online. The way that I do spectrograms online is that I use the the height of the camera window as the spectrum. And I'll ask participants to put their hand up here at a 10 out of 10, to put their hand here to represent a 5 out of 10, or to put their hand at the bottom to represent a 0 or a 1 out of 10. And we ask all participants to do this at the same time, and on a Zoom room, for example, they could all look around and see where they fit in within the spectrogram based on that prompt. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video about the spectrogram. If you found it helpful, uh, there's a handful of other videos similar to this that you could view and learn more about experiential therapies.